Hello YouTube, this is Dakota from Bowtie Media, and welcome to another installment of Hot Takes. This is episode 10, where I have asked on Twitter, on Discord, and YouTube for your hot takes about anything and everything, and we're going to talk about them right now. Smaller EDM artists don't connect with their audience well, and it isn't a huge problem, but it's bothered me a bit. It feels like other than putting out tracks and maybe making versions of those tracks, a good amount of them won't do much to entertain the fans or get more personal with them. I, like, I mean, it all depends on the artist. I feel like there are a bunch of smaller artists that do a great job of reaching out and being on uh, social media platforms. But like as a whole, if you're going to say all smaller artists, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, at what point also are artists just like there's so much conversation around them. Like what you believe to maybe like a smaller artist may be actually a pretty big where they are catching up on so many things on so many different platforms that it's hard to keep up with comments from people. But um, generally, I think maybe it's a weird thing because I would say yes to that where I do think there's not in, in the grand scheme of things, people don't reach out a ton, but also it's not necessarily their job to adhere to what you want to be, to be on Twitter, to be on discord, to be on the YouTube community stuff, to do all those things. It's not really their job. Their job is to, to make music. Uh, and so some of them just don't like that aspect of it. Like think of like a Daft Punk or a Tristam where both don't really like the social aspect of the, what comes with the popularity and they just want to make music and that's what they want to do. So maybe I think that's probably just it. It changes from person to person. Dipping roast chicken in mayo is goaded and extremely underrated and people need to do it more. I mean, like maybe a like a, a seasoned mayo, like a chipotle mayo, but just straight mayo. Ugh. I don't like how music is consumed nowadays with the streaming services like Spotify being the go-to when it comes to consumption. In my opinion, it leads to less conscious interaction with music. People just turn on playlists and most of the time they don't know the artist or song they're listening to. Streaming also shapes the norms of the music industry with songs being shorter, cookie cutter, and less interesting to generate as many streams as possible. Um, like yes and no, which is I feel like a cop-out answer of sorts, but I would say uh, like, Yes to the first part where it does, Spotify is different, and it, but that's just the culture. That, that is where music is going these days. That is the the uh, the access to everything. Everything you can do is on a phone now. You have instant access to everything in the world right here. And so, yes, the attention spans and stuff are going down, and, and what we listen to is a little less intentional. It's more just experiencing a, a ton. A Spotify playlist, I guess, is what you're going for here. We just hit on a playlist. You don't really pay attention. But isn't that also like the beauty of Spotify? Like, think about it the other way. Like rather than having to go and buy like records or cassettes or DVDs or uh, whatever DVD CDs um, from forever ago. And actually that wasn't too long ago. And just like you, you'd have to consciously go and it cost a ton and you, you don't have this giant catalog. If you really like for, yes, for people that really, really love music, they have giant catalogs, but for like the average listener, which is like probably 95% of people, it's just way easier to listen. And the access to so many more people is just so easy now. So, um, yeah, like, yes, it comes with its pros and cons, but I think more so other than paying artists, I would say uh, Spotify has more, more pros to it. Streaming is more pros. David Guetta should stop releasing music altogether. He's finished. Uh, that will not happen, uh, but he's uh, he's definitely on the decline. I'll say that. His last track with Oliver Tree was not great um, in any sense of the word. And so, yeah, David Guetta has definitely reached his peak, uh, and that peak wasn't very high, but uh, he will continue to make music for a long time. And if not, at least he'll ghost produced. You'll, you'll see him around for a long time. I think making music that is specifically aimed to be played live can have a bad impact on EDM, seen as it is becoming more and more of a norm. Sure, a song may sound good live, but it can also sound abysmal otherwise, and casual listening happens way more often than seeing artists live. Like, sort of true here, sort of fair, but I, from my understanding, a lot of artist revenue comes from uh, merch slash live, like going to actually having their own shows or concerts or whatever. My understanding is that's where a lot of revenue comes from. And so I understand why they would make stuff that's more adhering to a live audience and to, yeah, just that live sound. But, um, you know, I wouldn't say artists are making it specifically to be aimed live though. I would say that's not the norm. I think, um, a lot of, other than like the top commercial radio stuff, I don't think there's a lot of stuff that's meant to be played live. I, I just don't think that's actually the direction that EDM is taking right now. So maybe that's just my own hot take there. But um, yeah, so like 
sort of agree, but I, I don't think I don't think it's going live uh, that much. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I should think about this some more. If you make ranking videos but have no experience in music production, you should not be allowed to make ranking videos. <sighs> okay, so um, this may uh, blow your mind, which I don't think it should. Um, well, you better stop watching me because I have never touched uh, a DAW in my life. I don't know the single thing about uh, music production. I, to be fair, I know music theory. I was in band for all of high school. Uh, I played in a jazz band. I played a commercial band. I played in a, a concert band. Um, I played the saxophone for like seven years. Uh, but other than that, I do not even have the slightest clue how to make anything. I've made uh, a song in garage band when I was like 10 and it sounds awful. So, I mean, if you think that, then you better stop watching me because uh, I guess I have no, no reason to be talking about music. Orange juice is the best fruit juice out there right now. Nothing beats the feeling of drinking orange juice after a long day, especially when you freeze it just enough to get that frosty feel. Orange juice also has saved me so many nights when I needed it most. So I think it's safe to say it's the best fruit juice. Can we go? So what what is the context of orange juice also has saved me so many nights when I needed it most? What does that mean? I would love to know what the context between that is. Um, uh, but <laughs> uh, generally, I, I would agree. I think orange juice is solid. I think it's probably the best fruit juice. Um, that being said, there was conversations about oranges versus apples as well. But uh, I think apple is a far superior fruit to eat. I think as a core actual physical fruit, um, I think an apple is way better than oranges just because oranges are messy and they actually don't taste that great, I would say. But uh, orange juice, I think, is great. And also my hot take is I love pulp. Big fan of pulp. I get lots of pulp in my orange juice. If an artist wishes to stay anonymous, people should respect that rather than trying to find out who they are. I've seen this where people go out of their way to find out who anonymous artists are. Usually there are different aliases of another artist and it ends up being treated like common knowledge. This goes directly against what the artist wants to wants that alias and is effectively doxing them. There are many reasons why an artist would want to stay anonymous. Perhaps they don't want a, they wanted a complete fresh start and don't want their new music to be instinctively compared to their work under previous alias. This should be respected. I've seen I've seen specifically this with artists like Tokyo Machine and Cloud Nun. Um, yeah, interesting. I, I would say yes, for the most part. I would say if you passively come across it and or if you're like casually talking about it, then I would say yeah. Um, like I don't think there's any harm in knowing. Um, so for example, I, I, like I know the the other aliases of both Tokyo Machine and Cloud Nun, um, but I'm I'm not gonna say them, and I don't like if you're passively gonna come across it, then I think why not? But uh, yeah, I think for the most part, I sort of respecting what an artist does, and honestly, I like the mystery of it. I honestly really do like the mystery of it, of knowing like when there's a, when there's specifically like a mask over an artist, like I guess both Tokyo Machine and Cloud Nun, there is a kind of fun uh, just like mystery to the artist, and obviously it's not you're not I'm not trying to find out who it is oh, like time and time again, but just like, uh, it just feels like a, a character rather than the person. And that's something that they want to be, which again, Daft Punk is a great example where they didn't like the limelight. They didn't like the popularity that came with the music. So they wanted to be anonymous. They wanted to have a regular life outside of uh, their music production. So I would say, yes, if an artist is mass in capacity, and if you look through all their socials and there isn't like a name for them, they don't have something or it doesn't say, oh, formerly known as, I would say, don't go out of your way to find it. If you passively stumble across it, Great, but I wouldn't go about shouting who these people are. Half and Orange are like the chain smokers of Monster Cat. Both duos' vibes as mus musicians are uncannily similar, as well as both singers' voices, and they're all definitely like the kind of people to get into NFTs. <laughs> um, this is... Wow, uh, <laughs> I, I don't know how to respond to this. That is a that is a bold a bold statement, Eric. I would say um, that because a lot of this rides on how you think of the chain smokers, but um, man, you know, as much as I hate to say it, the more I think about it, the more it feels true. Um, the, the NFT things is a whole other whatever. I don't even know if the chain smokers did NFTs. I, I know half an orange like supported that, but um, that's a whole different conversation that I'm not going to get into. But uh, as a, as musicians, I can kind of see it. I can kind of see it. I hate to say it. It makes sense. Oh no, Eric, what have you done to me? <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>